Example 4. Fido the Golden Retriever is walking along a lake's straight shoreline with his owner, Jake. Jake picks up a stick and throws it into the water so it lands four feet offshore and ten feet in front of it. Ten feet in front of where they are. Excuse me. Fido loves playing fetch and wants to get to the stick as fast as possible. He can run at three feet per second and swim at one foot per second. How far along the shoreline should Fido run before jumping into the water so he reaches the stick in the least amount of time? Now this is an example of a problem that would be nearly impossible to do without drawing the picture. So let's definitely be sure to draw a picture of this problem and label it with variables. Here we go. So let's pretend that this is the lake, all this area here. And it's a straight shoreline. So you have a guy and his dog walking. Here we only care about the dog, so that's what I'm going to draw. There. Doesn't really look like a dog, but you get the idea. There he is. Jake picks up a stick and throws it into the water so it lands four feet offshore and ten feet in front of where they are. So here's the stick. Lands there. Where this length right here is ten feet in front of where they are and this is four feet offshore. So this is ten, this is four feet. There's the stick. Fido loves playing fetch and wants to get to the stick as fast as possible. So what he's going to do is he's going to run along the shoreline and then jump into the water, taking a path like this. Along the shoreline, then here, jump into the water and go straight for the stick. Now he'll do that because if he jumps right into the water, he'll have to swim all of this way, which is not a very efficient path because he swims slowly, only one foot per second. On the other hand, running all the way to this point, ten feet, and then swimming straight is not a very short path. That's a long path. He'd be running ten plus four is fourteen feet. So he's going to go somewhere in the middle, run most of the way, and then swim the rest. The question is, how far along the shoreline should he run before jumping into the water? We have to label some kind of variable. So let's label this distance right here x. Okay, step two. Decide what you wish to optimize and write an equation in terms of the variables. So what we wish to optimize, if you read this, uh, he reaches the stick in the least amount of time. So what we want to optimize is the amount of time. We want to minimize it. So let's think of how we can uh, write an expression having to do with time here. Well, what we have is distances, 10 feet, 4 feet, x feet, and rates, 3 feet per second, 1 foot per second. And so we know distance equals rate times time. So let's write two expressions um, that will give us the amount of time he runs and the amount of time he swims, and then we'll add them together. So let's talk about the amount of time he runs. The distance that he runs, which is this length, is 10 minus x, because this plus the x has to equal 10, so it must be 10 minus x. So 10 minus x equals the rate of running, 3 feet per second, times the time he spends running. That would mean that the time he spends running is, if you divide both sides by 3, 10 over 3 minus x over 3. So we have that piece of information. If we do the same thing with the amount of time he spends swimming, we need the distance he's going to swim, which we haven't figured out yet, equals 1, that's 1 foot per second that he swims, times the time he spends swimming. And we're going to solve that for t of s. But we don't know the distance yet. So let's figure this out. What is the distance here that he spends swimming? Well, if you notice, this right here is a right triangle. There's one leg, there's another leg, there's the hypotenuse, and that is a right angle. So the Pythagorean theorem applies. Okay, we know 
a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, x squared plus 4 squared equals our distance squared. x squared plus 4 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So, we know that the distance is the square root of x squared plus 4 squared, 16. So that is what goes here. Square root x squared plus 16. All right, let's get back to this. Now we know the distance equals the rate times the time. This tells us, because that's just a 1, that Ts, the time spent swimming, is just x squared plus 16. So, now we know the time he spends running and the time he spends swimming. So, therefore, the total amount of time that he takes to follow this path is time spent running plus time spent swimming, which is 10 thirds minus x over 3 plus square root x squared plus 16. Okay. Now, we just finished step two. Step three, if there's more than one variable, eliminate all but one of them. In this case, there is not more than one variable, so we're done with that. Next step, draw a graph of the function you wish to optimize. Let's graph this. Okay. Here we go. I'm typing in t equals 10 over 3 minus oh, x over 3 plus square root of x squared plus 16. And if I graph this, I get something like this. My window here is x is from 0 to 10, y is from 0 to 15. And you can reason why that's a good choice. And it looks something like this. So it goes down a little bit and then back up. So my graph is going to look like It looked something like this. And what we're looking for is this point right there at the minimum, because we want to minimize the amount of time. Okay, let's do that. Step five is take the first derivative of the function, set it equal to zero, and solve. So let's do that. Taking the first derivative of t with respect to x. First derivative of 10 over 3 is zero. First derivative of minus x over 3 is minus 1 third. And now we have to do the derivative of square root x squared plus 16. So for that we need the chain rule. We need to think about square root x squared plus 16 as x squared plus 16 as one object, the inside function, to the half power. And when we take, and we, when we do that, we get 1 half x squared plus 16 to the minus half which is this, 1 half x squared plus 16 to the minus half times the derivative of the inside function, the derivative of x squared plus 16, which is just 2x. So, there we go. That's chain rule. Now we have to set this equal to 0. I'm just going to put the 2x on the top. And solve this equation. Now the first thing you notice when solving this is that the 2's will cancel. So we cancel the 2's and move the minus 1 third over, we get 1 third equals x divided by square root x squared plus 16. Now, there are many steps you could take to get to the answer here, but I'm just going to do it by viewing this as a proportion and cross multiplying. So all of you have probably done this. 1 times x squared plus 16, is, or square root x squared plus 16 is the square root x squared plus 16. 3 times x is 3x. And at this point we have no choice but to square both sides to get rid of the square root. That might introduce extraneous roots, but that's okay. We'll check them at the end. Squaring the 3x gives us 9x squared. Don't forget to square the 3. So now we've got this, and we're going to subtract x squared from both sides to get 16 equals 8x squared. Divide by 8 to get 2 equals x squared, and take the square root to get x equals the square root of 2, 
which is about 1.414 feet. All right, now let's look back at the problem, at the picture. X we got is 1.414 feet, and in the context of the problem, it makes sense. He's going to run along this way until he's got about 1.4 feet left, until he, until he would get to the closest point on the shoreline to the stick, and then he's going to give up and jump in the water. So, um, let's see, what was the original question for part six? Remember, answer the actual question. And it was, how far along the shoreline should he run? So the 1.4 feet is not the distance along the shoreline, it's the distance he has left. So the distance he would run would have to be the other 8.6 feet. So he should run 8 point, I'm trying to subtract this from 10. So what is that, 8.586 feet? along the shoreline and then jump in. And that's it. And then, you know, this is actually what dogs do, uh, or so I've read. So they're not, they're not stupid. They're not going to run past the stick and then jump in, or even run all the way here and then jump in. They know that the fastest thing to do is to run almost all the way and then jump in. Okay. Um, that's it.